Kubi Factorium. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words of the words of the developer. Build, manage, and grow a thriving colony. Discover new lands, craft legendary weapons, and defeat your enemies. Kubi Factorium will feature different biomes to explore, plenty of resources to exploit, complex machinery to build, and interesting production chains to master. Now guys, this is literally just out now in early access. Um, I got a key the day before it came out from the developers, so thank you for that. And I've played it all day. I've done 13 and a half hours in this game. And it's a bloody toughie, guys. You see, I love these colony building, city building kind of settlers type games. And this is a kind of a cross between early settlers, dwarf fortress, I guess, a bit of factorio, satisfactory. It's that kind of, it's, you know, nomse? It's that kind of stuff. But it has to be said, guys, that it's kind of broken it's buggy let's start with the bugs it, it, it's buggy it's got a memory leak after a, about i don't know five hours play i had to switch it off and reboot it simply because it was just chugging along at like 25 30 frames a second that's how much it felt like it was just jerking everywhere um so that needs sorting out and i've already spoke to the developer about that and he's having a look at it so that, that's fine there's a few other little bugs um, where certain things you can't select them it's a little bit clunky sometimes when you're trying to select stuff and it doesn't work nothing really to write home about i guess but there are bugs in this game but for me the biggest problem is it's just not ready it's just not ready you've got a campaign mode which i'm pretty much three quarters of the way through where you start off on a small little island you then have to complete the goals of that island which will be to manufacture a certain number of different items once you've done that you then move to the next uh, island that you can go to and you take all the stuff you've made which is great so that's a big help for when you get there but it might be a different biome so it makes it a little bit harder and then you go to the next one after you've done the the little requisite for that and then the next one and then the next one and then the next one now the problem with that is you are starting from scratch again and again and again and it just becomes so damn boring and repetitive because you're just building the same early buildings over and over again and there doesn't seem to be much to do you know you just kind of i spent a lot of my time just sitting watching it all just kind of come together you see the the enemies there's enemies on the islands and they're, they're represented by a gray kind of border zone uh, like they are in Settlers, in the early Settlers. And what you do, you just simply click into their border and it'll tell you what enemy strength they are. And then you just attack them with yours. Now, it doesn't matter how much better than you they are because your guys will go in there, fight them. And to do that, they all form a little circle and they take, uh, take the turns like in the early Settlers games to, to do the little fighting with each other. And depending on what weapons you have equipped, it'll be how that'll be how tough your guys are. Um, you, you've got stone, you've got iron, and stuff like that, so you can craft better weapons. And if you're not going to win, you simply call off the attack. Your guys retreat, go to sleep, get back to full health, and then go in the next day and finish them off. So it kind of didn't really care whether how high the enemy were. I just. If they, if they were lower than me, if their overall numbers were lower than mine, I would kill them straight away. If they were higher, I would just do it over a couple of turns. And then you get the land that they had, and you can exploit that for its minerals and stuff like that, and carry on on you go. It was all kind of a bit... It was just a bit, bit boring. And this is the problem with the game. You've got all these cool things. You've got full automation. You've got trains. You've got roads. And guys, after 13 and a half hours of playing, I've never even had to build one of them. I don't need them. I've never yet had the need to build trains, zeppelins. I mean, I did build them, but I didn't need them. In fact, I built some zeppelins and didn't even use them. I just built them for the sake of it. it it's just not necessary on the maps. They're so small, the maps that you get that you just go from one to the other, one to the other, one to the other, you know, maybe it's an hour and a half, two hours on each map, 
you don't need full automation in roads you guys can carry the stuff around at the small little island and you can just speed up time if they're taking a little bit too long that's a problem you see in games like factorio you needed automation you literally needed the automation in this you don't now you might need it in the the last bit of the game but the problem is the content for the last bit of the game isn't isn't ready yet so it's all buggy when i got into the late tier two stuff um certain things was were not appearing on the screen so i didn't know what they were there was placeholders in and things like that so it's not really ready for the full kind of automation which means that the the actual video for this game on the on steam is a little bit misleading because it kind of gives you this impression that you need to build all this stuff you can build it but there's absolutely no point in doing it when you're playing the campaign at the, uh, certainly where i'm at in the campaign and i'm almost at the end of tier two and there's only tier three to go now there is a sandbox mode where you can just select the type of map that you want and I, again i've played that i did a couple of hours in that it's a bigger map but again the enemies are just piss easy i mean not not once that i get attacked i don't actually think you ever get attacked in this game it was just kind of like there you go build your wheat farm build your wells have your little area where your your, your stockpile goes so you can put the water from the well the wheat will go in there as well build a few bakeries the baker will take the wheat to you know the dance and the water and i love all this i mean you know I'm, i might be sounding a bit negative on that but i actually love all of that stuff you know getting the baker to, to bake the bread and all of that you know you can uh, put down gardens and have strawberries and tomatoes and things like that grow all of that for your um for your settlers if you like we'll call them settlers you build little workshops and you turn the basic wood that you chop down of the trees into um, tools that you can actually use. You'll mine the stone, combine the wood and the stone. You can make better uh, tools and better weapons. Then you can mine iron and metal and copper. Then you set up smelters and uh, metal working shops and things like that. Then you build robotics factories and have little little robotic arms lifting gear from one place to another which again i didn't need didn't even need conveyor belts or roads i was happy to use animals to, to lump stuff around from one place to another and and that was pretty much it i just kind of felt like i was repeating myself over and over and over again from one map to the next and i'm disappointed it's 15 pound and at this moment in time i don't think it's worth it um, I think you'll get bored. I mean, I've played it 13 and a half hours and I did get bored. I just, I had to play it because that's what I have to do. But if I hadn't had to review the game, I'd have stopped playing it after about two, maybe two or three hours. Because once you see that it's just rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat without any kind of challenge. And there was no challenge. I literally never, in, in all those 13 and a half hours, I haven't been challenged even slightly. You just have all these things that you can make at your disposal and you make them because you can, not because you have to. And that's a big problem. One of the things that really impressed me with this game was the tutorial. You get like a section of maps where it shows you each pretty much section of automation that the game can do and how to do it. It's, a, it's like a, a mini game. It's like a mini map all set out by the developer so that you can learn every little aspect of the game now if only bigger games did that like some of the AAA games i mean the amount of games that release that pretty much don't have a manual or a tutorial so a lot of games can learn things from this game now what i will say to end is this i do think this game has huge amounts of potential because it looks fantastic and the tools are in place for a really good game I just think that the developer really needs to think about the difficulty of it and maybe have you coming under attack or make the enemy that redo the combat of it it's just not it's not settlers you know in settlers you had to be on your toes you had a kind of there was an urgency around your build because the enemy was building as well and they would just attack your your base and i'm not suggesting this guy can do what blue byte software did but at the end of the day we need to have more than what we've got we need to have purpose there is no real purpose to it all um bigger islands is an absolute must make me need a train 
to get from one side of the, the, the island to the other. But when you have all these little islands, I don't need trains, zeppelins and conveyor belts because everything's just right next to each other. You've, you've got to make it bigger. It just needs to take what you've got and just expand it like f***ing huge, man. Make it big, you know? There you go. So there you go, guys. If you like the look of this and you think it might be one for the future, grab it. If not, well, just wait. I will be revisiting this six months' time, which means five years. I'll try and do it earlier. I'll try.